Hello, Rim of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both empower and inform the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. <clears throat> there are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 351. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, good friends. It's good to be in the studio and talking to you. Um, we're having a lot of things happen over at the at the uh, conference center. We, uh, you know, we told you we had uh, phase two completely paid for, and they haven't finished that yet. They're waiting on the cabinets, and then they can go ahead and do the rest. The floor's all done. The, uh, they're going to uh, just put the cabinets in the the bathrooms that's that's all done paid for and the contractor had wanted to go ahead and start on uh, phase, three. phase three which is in where we're going to have the eating the fellowship hall and and the tables and um, he said that we could we could pay him later but he's i think that there's something that they have planned later in the summer that they have to do they so he wanted really to, busy, to yeah. go ahead and get it done and Oh, I didn't. I didn't like that because I didn't have the complete amount set back. I don't like giving the go ahead until it's all set back. And um, God just done a miracle because we've got it. <laughs> and uh, what was even more of a miracle is when they got in there and started doing the the ducts up that were going to go in the ceiling where the the vents will come out for heating and air. That heating and air unit was bad. So there was another eight thousand dollars on top of of what, and it came in too. So praise the name of Jesus. He is so faithful. He is obviously wanting this done by this fall. Yeah. He's got something that he has planned that we need to gather and we need to pray and we need to see the moving of of the Holy Spirit. And so um, thank you so much, everybody that that is donated so generously beyond anything we could have ever asked for. Um, Thank you so much for trusting in us. Yeah. And just keep in prayer when we start to order the chairs and the PA and the video and all that stuff, that nothing's on back order or setting, in, yeah. setting somewhere in China. We need it here in the United States where we can easily get it. Yeah, the funds won't be a problem for that part. It's just we've got to be able to get to get it here. Yeah. Um, and so we're so grateful. We praise God for everything he's doing. And uh, Mike's walking it every day. I've been going over there and walking and praying and um I just I felt such an anointing the other day when I was over there praying, and I thought, God, I want what you want, nothing what we want, just what you want done, and um, so it's it's going to be something that we can all look forward to, and we're so grateful. And this last week, it just started out that way. God kept talking to me about divine exchanges, and I've had to. Uh, appropriate those scriptures in my life a lot because there were some things that were so horrible <laughs> that there's only one way to get through that and that's that you have to trust God to take the raw emotion off of a memory off of things that are going on in the present time and and a memory that you can use as a testimony but without it crushing you you know there's there's so many people Mike that I've heard stories from and what they've been through is is unbelievable and it's and there are thoughts that are just unbearable and so and you know we used we prayed that over you and i know all our uh, listeners were praying we're so grateful when you saw that man get killed um in that got hit by a dump truck and so uh thank you for praying for us guys i don't know what we do we without you we couldn't do this ministry i'll tell you no. that it is so huge it, it is something that god has called the remnant to move as a unit together. yes and that's and it's it's so precious to us every prayer that you say and boy does it impact us um because you know I, I you know even with what we do on this i mean there, there are days that you just like to just give up and walk away and just you i mean you get frustrated and uh there are times that uh, you're just so tired you just feel like uh it would take a crane to get you up out of the chair sometimes. And guys, we can feel your prayers. Yes, we can. That uh, all of a sudden it's, it's the spirit of God hits you and you think, okay, somebody's praying for me. I can go ahead and finish what yeah. I need to do. And and Mike's lost 30 pounds, guys. He's been <sighs> on this um, 
it's a very strict regimen and exercise, but he's he's done so well. I've been so proud of him for and sticking I, to I've it. I've swallowed it's, stuff and drank stuff, and <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's it's detoxing me, it's feeling better, getting more energized. And uh, yesterday, not only did I walk my hour and weight lift, I I came and and did a whole bunch of stuff in the yard last night and. Uh, I think I barely remember hitting the pillow when I went to bed last yeah, night. It makes for a good night's sleep. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> but thank you so much, guys. And we are we are for sure in prayer for you guys. We just, you know, hear so many things that are heartbreaking. And and um, it's, it's a point to where I know we're doing what we're supposed to do because it's we have such a love for the people. Um that are our listeners, and, and some we've never met face-to-face. We just talked to or maybe just got emails from. But we sure do love you guys. We do. You know, and I, with some of the things we're going to get into today, when you look at what Jesus did for us on the cross, uh, I, I don't think that if, if we could get Spielberg saved and George Lucas saved and some of the ones who do cutting edge on production, I still don't think we could do justice uh, to what happened. And in fact, when you read the writings of Flavius Josephus, uh, who was a witness, and he was a Jewish historian of the day that also became a champion for the faith, that he basically said that the body of Christ on the cross became human rubble. And I think one of the things that we, we you know, we, we look at that and we, we try to understand, was that just the wrath of God? Just the wrath of God, 100%, poured out on him because of sin. Or, as we begin to read scripture, that he, when we read Isaiah 53, there's some scriptures Mary's going to get into, that the full impact was not only the wrath of God for sin, but the consequences of sin that has torn our lives apart, all of that was poured out on him at one moment on the cross. You know, one of the things that, that I, I've, I've got a sermon, <coughs> and it, it, I can't remember if, if, if I entitled that, that, geez, that the, the cross was the ultimate singularity in time-space, that it is, it is a, a, a pivotal point in history to where all the sin and all the consequences of sin from before the cross was poured out, as well as after the cross, it reached out in space-time. And all of it, guys, all of it was poured out on him so that we could be free. And I, th- I think the, the enemy has got us to where we don't fully recognize the impact of what the cross has done. That's why the Apostle Paul said, listen, I don't want to know anything. I don't want to know anything. I give up everything in my life. But to know Christ and him crucified in you, to know that and, and, and to understand the power not only of the cross but of the resurrection because on the resurrection side, we come up free from not only sin, but everything that sin has ever done to us. And we can begin experiencing that resurrection power now. Every time that God heals us, every time that God restores us, guys, we're experiencing resurrection power. And I I, I believe that during this podcast, the Holy Spirit is wanting to release an anointing that is going to begin healing and restoring and doing things in our life that we can begin experiencing resurrection power now. Well, who do you think the enemy went after? The remnant. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow he knew. It may be the angels that came when the remnant were born, but somehow he knew because he he has just went into overtime making it unbearable and trying to trying to put enough on people that they they just fall under the the weight of it. It's so great, and uh, I I think we're we're getting ready to enter into a time of restoration of a lot of things, but especially 
for torment from the past that just haunt people. I think we're getting ready to see restoration. You know, Jesus had to know that, Mike. He had to, he had to see exactly what he was going to go through and what he was going to take on. And that's where you talk about he looked ahead in time. Yeah. The Bible says in, in the book of Hebrews that he was able to endure the horrors of the cross because of the joy that was set before him. Guys, that joy is you and me. That he saw the lives that were going to be changed, the lives that were going to be brought into the kingdom, the the hearts that were going to be healed, uh, the marriages that were going to be healed, the bodies that were going to be healed, that how many souls were going to make it to heaven mm-hmm. because of what he was doing. And he saw he saw the condition that the enemy was going to put the people in. And so he was saying, I'm making a way out. Yeah. So I want to read Isaiah 61, uh, just a few of the scriptures here. It says, uh, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And, you know, we've been talking about these invisible prisons that um, witchcraft and technology have created and and a lot of people are are bound by that and i believe those things are coming open uh verse 2 says to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our god to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in zion to give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified and you know the kingdom of darkness is, has been like a series of F5 tornadoes just coming through the lives of the people. And you know, I, I read stories all the time, and I think, man, I don't know how. You know, God just has to be strengthening people. And, uh, and I'm sure that there are many that feel like they're just hanging on, waiting for Jesus to come, and things are going to never change. But I make a declaration this morning that before we leave this planet— Almighty God is going to show forth his power in a way we've never seen. Yes. And I wanted to read uh, Matthew Henry's commentary on uh, this exchange where it says, Beauty for Ashes. He says, uh, Whereas they lay in ashes, as was usual in times of great mourning, they shall not only be raised out of their dust, but made to look pleasant. Note, the holy cheerfulness of Christians is their beauty and a great ornament to their profession. Here is an elegant paranomasia in the original. He will give them, and he, he puts it in parentheses, fear beauty. It's, uh, he's breaking it down into, um, the, I guess he's breaking it down into Hebrew. Yeah. Is that... And then Ephir ashes, he will turn their sorrow into joy as quickly and as easily as you can transpose a letter, for he speaks, and it is done. The oil of joy, which makes the face to shine instead of mourning, which disfigures the countenance and makes it unlovely, this oil of joy the saints have from that oil of gladness with which Christ himself was anointed above his fellows. The garments of praise, it's just beautiful garments as were worn on Thanksgiving days, Instead of the spirit of heaviness, dimness, or contraction, open joy, open joys for secret mornings. The spirit of heaviness they kept to themselves. Zion's mourners weep in secret. But the joy that they are recompensed with, they are clothed with as with a garment in the eye of others. Observe, where God gives the oil of joy, he gives the garment of praise. Those comforts which come from God dispose the heart to and enlarge the heart in thanksgivings to God. Whatever we have the joy of God, oh, whatever we have the joy of God must have the praise and glory of. And uh, that's that's what I sense the Holy Spirit is getting ready to do on a grand scale uh, in so many areas. I think that we're going to, you know, we've been surrounded by lies. I believe that we're going to, it's going to be replaced with truth. We've been surrounded by unreality. You know, most people haven't even known what horrors are going on all around us. We've just been blinded to it. It's going to be replaced with reality. 
Yes, it is. It, some of it's going to be hard to look at, but man, every time we can have a chance to have truth and reality, let's grab it. You know, nothing ever comes out of lies and unreality. It just is torment. Well, and that's the work of the enemy. It is, and it's his, um, it's his ground. He works in that. Bible says wherever there's chaos and stuff that there's every evil work. And, uh, you know, I've, I've shared before that at the very beginning in Genesis 1-2 that you have hatohu and habohu, uh, that, that you have the confusion and chaos that laid hold of this planet. But yet the Spirit of God was there and basically contained this world so that God could re-terraform it, re- remake it so that man could be placed on here. And we, we see the same pattern. You know, the enemy always does the same thing over and over again. The, to understand the book of Revelation, you need to understand Exodus. You need to understand what happened in Egypt. Because when, uh, you know, I really believe that when uh, the son of perdition comes and has appeared, that it is, he's going to be Nimrod, okay? And many believe that Nimrod was the first pharaoh of Egypt. The Pharaoh, then, and that's what the world's preparing us for, guys, that as the Pharaoh of this world appears, it's because his servants, the priesthood of darkness, has enslaved us. That many of us, all the wounds that we have are because of the stripes of slavery that they have inflicted and their servants have inflicted those infected with sin have inflicted that have heeded to doctrines of demons. And we need to understand that none of that was the will of God. Now listen to me. Because the enemy will tell you it's your fault. The enemy will tell you that, you know, if, if you would have been different, if this would have been different. Well, imagine the children of Israel living in Egypt. And as they're under the burden of, of slavery and being beaten and forced to work and all these different things that they said, well, you know, can you imagine in that, in that atmosphere, the same boy, you know, if I'd have been different, maybe the, maybe these taskmasters would have treated me differently. She said, that's all a lie. And the truth is you didn't deserve any of that. Israel, when you look back at what was going on, they were the reasons that Egypt was still there. When you look at the story of Joseph they were the ones that brought the blessing. When the, the, the Pharaoh of the north, which was the one that knew Joseph, now the Pharaoh of the south ended up taking over, and he's the one that actually enslaved them. All his wealth. You see, before the famine, he owned a little. After the famine, he owned everything. In other words, Everything that this world, everything the the prince of darkness says that, you know, I can give you the wealth, I can give you the riches, I can give you the power. All of that is produced on the backs of the blessings that God puts on his people. And the nine judgments that fell on Egypt was God stripping away the blessing that they had stole from God's people. And we see the same thing in the book of Revelation over and over again. When Moses, before he left, he said, listen, there's going to come one just like me. You're going to know him because he's just like me. And you better heed his words. And Jesus is coming back to set us free of the Pharaoh, the God of the air, the Pharaoh of this world. But you know, he restored them as he was setting them free. And he wants us to become ambassadors, reconciled reconcilers. That God is getting ready to loosen anointing. And Mary, I think the balance that we need to have. And, you know, we, we, have, we have this divide in the body that half of them are preaching the cross. And I don't think they preach it adequately, by the way. Because we, we have an evangelicalism. We have turned it into some crazy mania thing. When you really see Jesus on the cross, when you really see what he has done for you, the exchange begins to happen. Yeah, that, I think that's the key. I, and I think, I know I didn't, I didn't understand it. No. Years ago, I didn't have an understanding of it. I always loved Jesus. Um, it, there was a love in my heart, and that was from the time I was a kid. 
But I did not understand what he'd done for me. And so we have one half of the body preaching the cross, but not adequately. And then we have the other half, and they they abandon the ways of Moses. They abandon the commandments of God. And then we have the other half now, Mary, that are almost abandoning the cross and just preaching the commandments. Mm -hmm. The remnant, now listen to me, the remnant preach both, and they get deep into both. The remnant are going to begin getting insights about the cross and what Jesus did for us that will bring men to their knees, not only in repentance, but in healing and restoration. When they see that all the pain and all the things that they have gone through that they would not even share with anybody because it was so painful mm-hmm. that you pushed it down and you pressed it down and and you you can't even look at it yourself because it is so filled with horror and so filled with pain and 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 that it it begins to skew everything about you to where the people around you no longer see you. They see a distorted version of you, the version of you that is trying to hold back the dam of all mm-hmm. the pain and everything. That's it. When you realize that Jesus came and what he did on the cross was to take it. That's right. To exchange it. And you you, you, you got to let it go. You got to yeah. give it to him. You know, in, in, uh, in Colossians, where it talks about he uh, he humbled himself and became a man and dwelt among us. The Phillips translation has a very interesting uh, translation. I'm just doing this by memory, but it said he emptied himself of his divine privileges. You know why he emptied himself? So he could fill you up. You see, everything was a divine everything. exchange. Everything. everything. When you look at it that way, it it becomes fresh to you, and and there's a a new level of healing there. Oh, absolutely. New level of, of standing in the authority that Jesus gave us and saying, enemy, you're not taking another step. You're not taking another step. I see what Jesus, the price he paid, and I'm going to take advantage of everything he paid that price for, for his honor, for his glory. Look, look, at, look at everything that Jesus went through, even before the cross. Okay, you, you, you start out the Gospels, and he's out preaching and doing his thing, and his uh, mother and his half brothers go and said, oh, we, "We need to get Jesus aside because he's gone nuts." That's basically what they said. They they didn't realize. Can you? Well, I, I don't. Some of you can already know what I'm talking about. That your family thinks that you're freaking nuts, yep. okay? <laughs> because you're following God and you're believing the Word and you're keeping the commandments and you're and you're you're still following Jesus, but you're doing the feasts and. They think you are completely off your rocker, and here's the family that knows you best has turned their backs on you, and said you are beside yourself. Is what the what this what the the King James says, but it means, you know, he has done fallen off the wagon type of thing. His own his own his own family, and then he gathers and he handpicks twelve. One of them betrays him. That ends up in his execution. And so he has the the betrayal of Judas, and then he knows that if he would have come to him, even while he was hanging on the cross, he would have forgiven him. Yes. And instead, one of his best friends, the one that he trusted with the treasury for the ministry, killed himself over what he had done. Another one of his best friends denied him in public over some little girl pointing and saying, I think you were with Jesus. And then all the people that just a week earlier were crying out Hosanna and, and hailing him as the king were screaming at the top of their lungs, crucify him. You know, there may, there may have been people in that crowd that he had just healed months and weeks before that that it, it's, it's almost unimaginable when that, but see, the, the, the whole thing is that, that he knew all of it. He, he knew, he knew everything <laughs> he knew that everything. was going on. He knew everything that we and, would ever go through. And he suffered all that and he, and guys. All the pain, the crown of thorns, the mocking by the Romans, the, the scourging, 
all of it he did to set us free. And that's that's why Isaiah said, guys, even the stripes. And when, when you look at the cat of nine tails, that, that's why Flavius Josephus said he was reduced to human rubble. In other words, his back was reduced to hamburger, okay? So much so that he could not even bear the cross all the way. He had to have help getting it to Golgotha. All of that, every every stripe that was on his back, every every thorn that pierced his brow, even going all the way back to Gethsemane when he struggled. And you see, he was struggling going to the cross, not because he didn't set his face there, because he had set his face to Jerusalem. He began experiencing our sinful nature that we didn't want to do the will of God. And and he would so struggle with that that capillaries began to burst in, in his forehead and he began to sweat blood. All of that, all of that was him bearing our pain. That's what Isaiah 53 says. Listen, the, all the mockery, everything that he went through, there was a divine exchange going on that through all the annals of time, all of it began being poured out on one spot it began to shake the earth. The sun refused to shine. Even the Roman that was sitting there, it was a part of the crucifixion, looked up and said, this has got to be the Son of God. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine a guy? That crucifixion was just some, because, I mean, the Romans were big on crucifixion. I mean, this guy probably had witnessed thousands of crucifixions, yet this one was different. The earth, creation itself, began to shake and to tremble at what was going on. And he looked up and said, I have never seen anything like this before. Surely this is the Son of God. Every bit of that, Jesus did for us. Well, I'm sure there are people so wounded that they think it's impossible to be restored. But I believe we're getting ready to see restoration on a level we can't even imagine. That's what keeps coming up. I I keep uh, hearing that the enemy's going to be so upset he's gnashing his teeth, gnashing his teeth. And let me read you Psalm 112. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness endureth forever, his horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away the desire of the wicked shall perish. So before the gnashing, look at all the things that are supposed to happen. There's going to be uh, wealth and riches in the house of the righteous. There's going to be favor. There's going to be all of these things. There's not going to be any fear. No. And so so the psalmist is saying <laughs> the enemy's going to gnash his teeth because he's seeing these things. Now right now it doesn't look like that's even possible. <laughs> you know every I mean honestly with everything is going but see God's got a thing going here guys. It it isn't going to matter and sh- and I I think most people would argue with me at this point. <clears throat> it isn't going to matter the economy of the earth. It isn't going to matter what wars are being threatened. There is a thing that God's getting ready to do right now that is is different than everybody's expecting the end. Everybody's yes. saying, okay, tomorrow could be it. This is the end. There's, you know, There could be nuclear war. There could be this and that. I can tell you there's a remnant that's going to be raised above all this. And, and God there's is going, going to be gonna, Goshen's in the middle of this. God's going to use his people to make the enemy gnash his teeth. Yes. You know, Jesus, when he left, he said he's going to send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. And um, can you imagine how the enemy hates the ministry of the Holy Spirit, restoring all the pain and suffering that the kingdom of darkness has caused? And that's what we're getting ready, getting ready to see. 
That's why there's such an exposure of everything that's going on. God's getting ready to judge it, and he wants everybody to see it so that everybody's going to understand exactly what he's doing. Yes. Because I think everybody's got this pattern in their mind is, okay, we just keep moving, moving, moving. Things are going to get worse and worse and worse until we get to the end. And, and there's truth in that as it is getting worse, but there's another thing going on. Yeah. There There's is. another thing going on. God's got a plan going on right now, and I don't know if everybody's catching it or not, but I've known about it for almost 30 years. And it, and it looked like it was just getting worse and worse and worse, and I kept thinking, well, when is this stuff going to start happening that God's told me about? When It's getting ready to. It's getting ready to. But he had to expose the lies so you could see truth. There had to be a divine exchange. He had to expose that you're living in unreality so he could bring you to reality. Yeah. Of just everyday life, not even counting the truth of, of the cross and all of that. I think I think we need, and I think some of the things the remnant are experiencing right now is the Holy Spirit is saying, aren't you getting tired of the baggage that you're dragging mm-hmm. of the past? Isn't it getting heavy? Let it go. Yeah. Give it to me. Yeah, that's that's the hard part. The hard part's forgiving yourself yes. for things. You have to make that choice and say, I choose to forgive myself. Now, Father, I'm, I'm going to have yeah. to depend on you to cleanse me up here and get my mind in the right place. But I make the choice to forgive myself for anything I've done or was made to do or whatever. But then there's this divine exchange. Because once you feel the freedom of that forgiveness, once you feel the liberty that that comes, guess what just automatically comes out of you? Praise. Praise I remember, I remember so well when, when that was lifted off of me, all of the junk was lifted and it just started pouring out of my mouth. See the, the, all this, this baggage and all this, this stuff in your mind and all the things that are, are tormenting you, they're holding down the praise. What does, what does God tell us to do? Praise you the Lord. Yes. If we can't even praise the Lord, we can't operate in his kingdom. So so God's getting ready to do a divine exchange like nothing we've ever seen. Yes, we are. Uh, there, the prison doors are going to fly open. People are going to be set free. There's going to be praise coming out of people's mouths that they can't even contain. Yes. And hey guys, let, let me tell you something. You have the right. And this this is what the Apostle Paul was talking about, that we are... That, that we are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down vain imaginations and every high thing, every high thought, every high mm-hmm. memory that tries to exalt itself over the word of God. You have a right to question because what, what, what happens, you know, the Apostle Paul talks about doctrines of demons and we, we look at that as, you know, well, the devil's messing with our doctrinal state, but that's not what that means at all hebraically. When... The enemy knew who you were, and I don't know the full extent of it, but I think that he sees an anointing. I think that he sees something, and so he begins to go to work at an yeah, early age. in the womb sometimes. And so the, the, the demons become tutors that they begin teaching you lies, and they have different people do different things to you. They set up situations, and then after it happens, they say, it's your fault. It's your fault. You deserved it, and they, you can't trust anybody. You've got to take control. And sometimes it gives you over to a Jezebel spirit. Sometimes an Ahab spirit. Sometimes other spirits because they're they're grooming you so that you will never yield completely to the Holy Spirit. That's what they're afraid of. That's right, because you become one weapon in God's hands. Yes, and they they don't want you free. They and, want you to stay bound. And the, the most fearful thing to the enemy is a soul set free that knows clearly who the enemy mm-hmm. is and is free in Christ to begin fighting back. That's right. And so they, they sold you all these lies. Well, you know what? You have authority in Christ to question everything. The, you know, the, apostle, the apostle Paul said, listen, prove all things. Hold on to that which is good. You know, Test it. Examine it. Make sure it's the real deal. And we, we have been taught lies our whole life. And not necessarily when somebody sat down and said, I'm going to teach you something today. It's, it's what the enemy orchestrated in your life 
to where he would get you to draw the conclusions that he wanted, almost kind of like the mainstream media today and all mm-hmm. this other stuff. You're being fed a bunch of lies. And, and you know, it's, it's almost like the kid raised in the barn. That's all he knows how to do is live in a barn when the Lord has made a mansion for him to live in. And he doesn't know how to do it because he doesn't know what to do unless he's in the barn. And, guys, it, it's time to leave the barn. It's, it's time to leave Egypt. It's time to, it. to leave the pain of it behind. And Jesus is saying, listen, I've already bore it all. That before... You were ever born. I knew everything that you were going to go through. Now, because of authority, and there's, I mean, there's authority lines and different things, God couldn't stop it. But God made a way of escape. He made a way of healing and restoration. And guys, even for those, whether you're, uh, have went through extreme trauma or just trauma to where you've repressed a lot of things. I mean, that, 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 that's almost like a natural part of the, the human psyche. Okay. A lot of times you'll you'll try to press it down with alcohol or drugs or yeah. even food. I believe we've both done that. Yeah, we've both talked about that. How we've just you know you you try to just stuff all the horrible emotions down. You try to get your mind on anything other than the thoughts that are in your head. It's just tormenting, and that's what that's what Satan wants us to focus on and be be in that that kind yeah. of a condition. Because when you're in that condition, we can't do what God wants us to do. We have to be in um, almost a, an atmosphere of praise and worship all the time. You know, there that needs to be just within us. Yeah. The the Holy Spirit just just flowing, and we can't do that when we're under such oppression and under the the weight of this. And it's it's time, guys. It's time for us to to say, Jesus, I can't bear this anymore. I I just can't bear this anymore. And I I believe that it's not your will that I suffer with this. Yes. And exactly. we know it's not His will because He paid the price, so we don't have to do it. And the truth is, you know, there's, we, we think, well, there's places in my mind and places in my feelings that I just can't let Jesus into. Jesus is already there and borne the pain of it. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's not letting him in. It's acknowledging that he is already there and just opening the door and say, okay, now cleanse it with the blood. And the truth is, you don't have to remember. It's, it's, it's like, okay, you've been there, done that, bought the T-shirt. Just go ahead and give the whole factory to Jesus. Just give it all to him. There may be things you can't remember. No. There, you know, a lot of people say they remember things when they're, when they're babies and things like that. There's a ton of my childhood I still can't remember. And so, you know, what I decided to do is, is this. I, I didn't know what to call it, but it was a divine exchange. Yeah. I just said, Jesus, I asked you to take it. Take, remove this stuff out of out of me. These it, at least remove the the horrors of it. Remove the horrid emotions of it, and just leave me a memory. But but I have to give this to you and ask you to fill it up with the Holy Spirit because then that turns it into a testimony. It's no longer a prison. It's no longer holding you back. It's look what the Lord has done. Absolutely, and and Jesus is waiting to sing. That's why the word says, cast all your cares upon him. Mm-hmm. It's not a burden to him. He's already bore it. He's already won the victory over it. He's just saying, okay, now you just got to let it go. And it's hard to do. Oh, man, it's hard to do. It's hard to do because everybody's got a natural response to this kind of stuff. You stuff it. You stuff it. You stuff it. You just don't let yourself think about it or you'll get busy. So you don't. I know so many people that just have to constantly stay busy because they can't stand their thoughts. My dad was that way. He, he would just constantly move and move and then he would drink, get to a point he'd drink because he couldn't stand the thoughts. Yeah. And when we give it to Jesus, the thoughts begin to change. It begins to change on, on him and on the kingdom. And guys, that heaven is waiting. It's. it's I think right now the the next wave of the Holy Spirit is the effects of when we let go and we let God be God. Well, and there's so much fear being pushed right now. And, and you know, in the psalm we read, it says, His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. Yeah. See, God's getting ready to judge a bunch of principalities. And powers and demons. I mean, mean things that have done horrific things, the the ones that have pushed the abortion, the ones that have pushed such oh, 
there's such a horrible thing attached to this abortion. There is some high-level demonic activity there, even with the people that are protesting. And and uh, we got to continue to pray for the, the Supreme Court justices because I, I really feel like their lives are in, in jeopardy. I, and, and I couldn't believe, okay, on Mother's Day, they're sitting there fighting, and they, they changed over the narrative to being you know grateful for good mothers to women having the right to kill their children. Uh, it, it's like, I don't, I don't understand that thought process, that we have become so marred with sin that women whose natural instinct, you know, even... Even a mother carrying a baby, have, have you ever seen how quick if there's something that will startle a woman or, or, or something, just how quickly she grabs her belly? Because the natural, normal instinct is to protect that which she's carrying. Well, the Bible talks about in the end times that there will, there will be those without natural affection. Yeah. And so... Uh, that that's how dark that sin has got a hold of them. They say, "What do we what do we do for them? We pray for them to get mm-hmm. saved." Yes, that if they'd actually get saved, well, there's you say, well, there's you know many parts of the church that are saying that the, the abortion is a divine right. You know what? I don't care what the name of the organization is over their door. They're not the church. The church of the living God protects life. The mm-hmm. church of the living God understands that every single human is a gift from God and is created in the image of God. We protect life. We protect innocence. It is the enemy who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. And this is huge. Um, this Roe versus Wade overturning, it's good, it's good. it would send it back to the states that already, a lot of them already have um, laws in place that will just go into effect to where it's banned. Um, and those those are the the states. If you look on the map and see those that that are banning abortion, there's a big swatch of us all together in the middle of the country. And I'm telling you, there's going to be safety there. Yes. And we've got to pray this goes through because it is key. If we are if we are gonna how well we survive, what's coming. Yes. It's going to, this is going to be key. It's not the only thing that's got to be dealt with, but it is, it is the main one. It is the one that has fueled all of this occult power. <clears throat> and so we've just got to keep praying, guys. Did you, I never thought in, the, in my natural mind that we would see a day when it was overturned. I just, I just didn't. I just, I just thought, God, this will. I thought God would just have to do it through judgment and just wipe out a bunch of stuff. But I'm seeing him use people. And so praise God for that. Praise God for that. And, and there's a real good chance we can get some, you know, I've, I've listened to a lot of the, even in other states, the people that are running for different offices and things like that. And I'm thinking, man, if we can get these down-to-earth people in office instead of these rhinos and the and the Democrats that are just lifelong politicians that don't care a thing about anything righteous or holy, they're they just, just up there to, to get power and money and talk to the lobbyists. You know, that's how we've got so many crazy laws on the books. So God's getting ready to do a turnaround. Yes, and, he is. And so this divine exchange is not just on a personal level, which is real important to all of us. It's going to be on a major level. I think I think God is getting ready when, when we look at, and now this, I'm not pre-trib. Now, I was pre-trib most of my life, and yeah. then I began really getting into it myself. Mary challenged me, and I began examining more of the scriptures. When When you look at the... Uh, biblical type that's put out in Exodus. God created a Goshen for safety, but you know, Mary, they were still they were still working in in Egypt during the day. But there was a place of safety, so that when God did pour out His wrath, there were places of safety. It was it was Moses led them out after the judgment was complete. Okay. Now, you know, I'm not going to sit and, and argue with people about just exactly when the timing comes because my blessed hope is to return to Jesus to fix this mess, okay? It's going to happen. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I, uh, I've got good friends that are pre-trib, and, and uh, we've, we've just, we just love each other, and, and we kind of joke and say, you know, if, if, uh, 
you know, that, you know, brother, if you're right and it's pre-trib, I'll give you a high five as we're shooting through the clouds. But you know what? You better have some supplies and some stuff prepared just in case. But and, uh, and I had a good friend that uh, uh, he was he was a uh, postmaster and he had a, a secret room built into his house that not only had, you know, uh, long term storage food, but I mean, he had a a boatload of Bibles. And him and I were talking about it. And back then I was very pre-trib. God hadn't uh, begun working on me yet. And he said, I look at it this way, Mike. He said, let's say I'm wrong in his pre-trib. He says, boy, he said, I have never found anywhere in the word of God that says the only way that I get to uh, go to heaven or, or be here and, 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 and get caught up is I have to have my eschatology right. Because he said, I can't find that, that I've got to believe pre-trib. Otherwise, I'm not going. But he says, I got to believe in Jesus and live with him from my whole heart. And he says, I look at it this way. If I'm wrong, he said, there's going to be people finding Jesus during the tribulation period that I believe the Holy Ghost will lead them to my house and show them how to get Mm -hmm. into this room. And there they're going to have food and they're going to have Bibles and some good reference things that I have that I have. uh, He he used the word squirreled away because he was squirreling this stuff like, you know, like a squirrel does nuts. But he said, if, if I'm right, he said, not only do I have enough to take care of me, but I have enough to take care of, of other believers and stuff. And he said, when Bibles are hard to find, he said, he goes, I decided that not only is food important, but the spiritual food is important. I mean, I bet you he had two or 3,000 Bibles that it's oh, yeah, was we stacked need to, up in, in, in that room. And, they need to be, be here for people to look at. And so when we, we, we look at this, I believe that God is going to establish Goshen's not only in America, but in other places around the world. And I believe there's going to be a revival of returning back to righteousness. Because when you, when you look at what Jesus said, when he comes back, he's going to separate the sheep nations from the goat nations. Now he said nations. Okay. And that, that can be ethnos, ethnic groups. Uh, it's, it's used synonymously with nations because back then it was basically broken down into ethnic groups. Um, and what that means is there's going to be nations or ethnic groups or groups that are not going to follow the son of perdition. You know what? That also means that God created Goshen's for them to survive the tribulation period. Well, I can't imagine there being a place much worse than the sin that we've had here in the United States. You know, the promoter of pornography, the... (laughs) I mean, it's just it's just unbelievable. Pornography, abortion, how much, the LGBT. I mean, everything. I mean, everything you that of. you can think of that would slap God right in the face. We've done. Um, and corporations but, are orchestrating that because there's big money in it. But wouldn't it be part of before the end to show His great power that He turns this place around, mm-hmm. and He could do it with the number of people. I mean. You know, he was going to spare some bad places before for a lot less than what we've got standing and praying right now. I mean, there are people standing and and praying against all of this evil, lots of them, millions of them. So we're going to see what God does. Yeah. And he's he's answering our prayers. It just is going to look really, really bad before we see the good stuff start happening because, uh, I mean, I I could have never conceived how he has worked this even with the Trump election by, by, because God allowed them, he could have stopped them. He didn't stop anything. He's allowed them to do all of the things uh, that they did in that election so that the truth would come out because, because we need the truth to come out. We need to see the truth of every person, every politician, so we can make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. And so man has the truth come out. The truth has come out. Uh, people are waking up, and I yeah, don't. That, I, I don't think the level of people that are waking up would have woken, or have awakened. I get my grammar right here. If uh, Trump had went back into office, I, I think that's no. A, I don't think so at all. Uh, I just thought, well, God will use that, and and maybe then we could have the hope of Roe versus Wade overturning. You know, because that that was part of of everything that was going on, and it boy, it, it was a shocker to me. Yeah. I, you know, God didn't tell me he's going to win, but I just thought, well, you know, surely I, I can't imagine how Biden could win because I knew how unpopular he was. I mean, it's just I just thought, well, this is a shoe in. Um, and that 
that was a shocker, and it, it took me a while to kind of get my bearings and think, well, God, what are you doing? And then it wasn't long because it was, and, you know, I had that vision after the election of them on the inauguration thing, and it was like they were all made out of cardboard. And I thought, well, okay, this isn't real then. There's something going on here. And Biden's obviously not the one calling the shots. No, he's not. He's but just simply a puppet. I, I watched that film by uh, D'Souza, is that his name, that did the 2,000 Mules? Yes. And they've got the tape. They've got the official tapes of the of the people that were stuffing the ballot boxes and were able to um, – track their cell phones yeah, and to see like yeah to like what nonprofit organizations they go to and then uh, go to these places and i mean it's just there it and it's not and they even underestimated a lot of this because they wanted to make sure they didn't over so they underestimated their their figures it's it's as clear as anything you've ever seen how they did it and so we got to pray for him that somebody doesn't try to do something there because any whistleblower, yeah, well, they many, try to and destroy. And Mike Lindell, they found out when you just look at statistics, mm-hmm. when you have more people voting than you have registered voters, uh, something's wrong, especially when a lot of them moved out of the area and you have people that actually voted in two or three different counties or states they no longer reside in. And see, we would have never seen any of this. No. We would have never seen how they did it. We would have never, we, we could have... The, the criminal machine has been revealed. Um, boy, has it ever. And, you know, they, they are looking at the Hunter laptop now. And what gets me is how the news, the news media is still <laughs> pressing against this thing. I mean, it is about as real as you can get. But they're, they're still living in their unreal world. Yeah. I saw a report uh, just this last week on it was a CNN panel. And one of them come up and said, if they don't do something about free speech in America, it's going to create hell. <laughs> and I'm thinking the only reason that we had America is because we had something called free speech. We went to war with, at that time, the greatest nation on planet Earth, England, for the right mm-hmm. to have free speech. Can, can you see this Orwellian stuff that they're trying to push? And we need to, we need to push this thing back in the can and weld the lid shut. Because it, it's gotten to the place of stupidity. I've really been praying here lately because I sense, I've not got a word from the Lord, but I sense that there are places in real peril right now. And it's I think it's going to be like what Henry Groover saw, where God wouldn't let him pray about a specific place because he said he was going to gather the wicked there mm-hmm. and they'd be destroyed. I am I am concerned about that. Um, but I, I know this, that God can take care of his people. And if there's a place that is in peril and there's... There's judgment coming. He can move his people out of there, too. Absolutely. So, guys, we're, we're in a, a strategic place, and I think that's one of the reasons that God is having us uh, begin praying more for the restoration of the remnant mm-hmm. because God needs you free. God needs you whole. Yeah. God needs you on the front lines fighting. You know, one of the things that, uh, that we pray every single night is that God would raise up the remnant that would be free, that would be whole, that would be filled with the fire of God, that would be his A-team, his his special forces on the front line fighting for the souls of men who will never bow the knee to the Antichrist, who will never bow the knee to the New World Order, but will fight for the souls of men, and the only place they ever bow the knee is before the throne of Jesus, and they will never bow to another, and they will never yield, that they will never betray, but they will stay true yes. to their king. Loyal. And, Father, that's what I pray over everyone that's listening to this today. Father, I I ask that you would loose the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Father, let the divine exchange begin. Father, let them, as they as they open up Isaiah 53 and read the Gospels and, and, and meditate on these scriptures, Father, let them see Jesus taking their pain, Jesus taking their wounds, Jesus taking their sickness and disease. And, Father, we command the things of the past. You let them go right now in the name of Jesus. We command the pain. You be gone right now in the name of Jesus. We command the things that haunt, that, that, that keep them up in the middle of the night, or the things that, that, re, that try to reassurge uh, from their memories as they, even when they try to do your will, Father God, I ask that you would touch that, Father, that yes. you would take the pain and the emotion away from it, and Father, that they would see those things nailed to the cross of Christ, that they would see every time that these things even cause them to fail you. 
because it was the baggage that was causing them to stumble and to fall. Father, let them see it nailed to the cross of Christ right now in Jesus' name. And Father, I ask that there would be a refreshing that would begin to flow. Father, that you would heal, that you would restore, that we would be just like those coming out of Egypt. Father, the the book of Psalms says there was not a feeble one among them. And Father, that feebleness, I believe, goes spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. Father, that it doesn't matter what age we are, that you're going to raise up warriors, Father, that will fight, that will pray, that will stand up for righteousness, that will let their voices be heard not only before God but before men, and they will always do the right thing. They will never yield. They will never give in to unrighteousness, but they will stand up for truth. And, Father, let the enemy tremble. Let them gnash at the teeth that they ever touched them. Yes. Because they realized, I have created my own worst enemy. Father, let us get mad at sin. Father, let us get mad at the world system. Father, let us get angry at the kingdom of darkness. So much so that we take up the power of the cross and we learn how to put on that armor. And Father, we become experts Mm -hmm. in wielding the sword of the spirit. Yes, Lord. So that we can win souls, change hearts. Change the dynamic of every situation because we carry the kingdom of God in there. And, Father, we just thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. The fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken, be empowered, and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.